What is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ mean to you personally? I'm sure we went to the audience this morning and asked different people. We would get several answers to that one question. Just to quickly recap and conclude what we saw on the Larry Poplar service this morning. Nicodemus, a very religious man, a highly educated man, a man who had studied the scriptures of his time. He thought he had answers. He thought he knew what he needed to know until he met Jesus. And Jesus spoke things to him that shook his understanding, that demanded something more. The Lord Jesus said, unless you are born again, Nicodemus, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And I'm sure to many of us, Jesus would say the same thing. Maybe we identify with Nicodemus. We've searched for truth, at least in our own estimation. We've looked for answers and we think we've found them after we've arrived at conclusions that we carry within us. But the Lord Jesus challenges that thinking. He places before us this very important truth that unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. The Roman centurion knew the authority of Jesus when he came to Jesus for a miracle for his servant. He knew that the Lord Jesus Christ had authority over sickness and disease. And so all he told Jesus was, just speak the word and my servant will be healed. But imagine in your minds what would have gone through this Roman centurion's thinking when he found out a little while later that this same Jesus who was crucified by his own men, nailed to a cross, locked in a sepulcher, guarded by strong Roman soldiers, and he knew what his soldiers were capable of. He knew that when his soldiers stood guard at any door, no one could go through. He knew it right well. And for him to see an empty tomb, the realization must have dawned that this Jesus whom he saw, whom he spoke to, whom he encountered, was not only Lord over sickness and disease, but this Jesus whom he had the privilege of meeting was Lord over sin, death, and the grave. He knew that this Jesus was the greatest king ever li who ever lived because he not only dominated circumstances, the winds and the waves, and the sickness and disease, but this Jesus conquered the grave and the death and death. Think about the Samaritan woman with all her needs. A very needy woman thought that she could find her satisfaction in men. Find that love that she needed, the friendship, the companionship, that, that acceptance, that significance in men. Until she met Jesus. And Jesus met her deepest need by saying, I'll give you water so that you will never, never thirst again. Think what the resurrection would have done to her. When Jesus died, she may have thought, well, here ends this water that meets my needs. The man who said he could give me water to satisfy my deepest longing is dead, is no more. But for her to walk by that empty tomb, to realize that not only did he die, but he rose up. The one who met her need will continue to meet her need because he is alive. Think about Mary who came to Jesus, gave him her very best, broke the alabaster box, cried, understanding the horrible life that she had lived, the mistakes she had made the wrong choices, perhaps justifying to herself that it was her circumstances that were driving her to do the wrong that she did because she needed a means to live off. But to come to Jesus 
and to hear him say, your, you are forgiven. Your sins are no more held against you. To rise up from that place knowing suddenly she was a transformed woman because she was forgiven of the guilt and the shame and the condemnation that she carried. What would, have, what would the death and the resurrection of Jesus meant to her when Jesus died? Perhaps she thought this was the end of it. The man who could forgive my sin, he's no longer there. Would I have to go back to a life of condemnation and guilt and shame with all these same people accusing me and no one to stand up in my defense? But within three days he found out that there was an empty tomb and the man who was crucified for her sins no longer remained in the grave, but he rose up, he ascended into heaven, and he ever lives to make intercession for us so that there can be no one who points against us with an accusing finger because our sins have been dealt with. And he stands before the throne of God as our advocate, saying, he is forgiven, she is forgiven. In her heart she knew. The one who said you are forgiven continues to maintain that. And no other accuser, accusing word, no matter if any one of her accusers stand before, beside her pointing a finger against her, there he was in heaven saying, you are forgiven. For these four young men who brought their friend to Jesus, they understood that Jesus not only forgives sins, but he heals. He transforms impossible situations. Whether it's the healing of our body, the healing of our soul, whether it's the change in our circumstances, this Jesus, if you will come to him in faith, if you will press through whatever obstacle that comes against you, that tries to hinder you from reaching Jesus, the history maker, the miracle worker, you will get your miracle. He not only forgives sins, but he transforms our lives. He heals our sicknesses. He breaks our bondages. He works miracles in our situations. What can Easter mean to you and me? The truth that Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross. He covered our guilt, our shame, our sickness, our disease. He triumphed over sin and Satan. He was buried and he rose up again. He's alive today. And Jesus Christ can be real to you and to me today. Whether like Nicodemus we're looking for answers Perhaps we think we found our answers or the philosophies that we embrace until we meet with Jesus. And he says, there's a higher way. There is a better way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. For any one of us sitting here this morning, this Easter could mean the same thing that Nicodemus experienced. A transformation inside you where you come to know Jesus Christ, the person who is the way, the truth, and the life. Or it could mean to some of us what the Roman centurion realized, that Jesus Christ is truly the conqueror, the conquering king, his dominion. Extends not, over, not only over sickness and disease, but over everything else, including death and the grave. And because he lives, we can live also. Or maybe, like Rachel, for some of us, Jesus Christ today could mean the one who satisfies the deepest longing of our hearts. We've been looking at various places, looking at various people, and looking at various things to satisfy a longing. 
either of companionship, of friendship, of love, of significance, of acceptance. But this morning, this Easter Sunday morning, I would that you and I would meet Jesus and find our completeness in him. Or for some of us who live under a constant feeling of guilt and shame and remorse over the past, the mistakes, the failures, the wrongdoings, in Jesus we find total forgiveness. Because he is the one who bore all our sins on the cross and paid for them. Some of us may need a miracle in our lives. This morning, I want to encourage your heart saying, Jesus, the miracle worker. Jesus, the living God, the king of all kings, he's alive. And no situation is impossible for him. He can work miracles in your life and mine if we will just trust in him. Could we rise up to our feet, please? I want to pray with us this morning. I want to give us an opportunity to turn our eyes upon Jesus. And in your own words, out of your own heart, would you express to him what he means to you this morning? Would you tell him that he is your complete satisfaction? He meets every need in your life. Would you tell him that you acknowledge him as king of all kings, the Lord, the conqueror, the one who has all authority and dominion? Would you tell him that you acknowledge him as the one who forgives your sins? Would you just in your own words talk to him? While each one is doing that, if there is anyone here this morning and you've never personally made a choice to welcome Jesus into your life as the one who gives you new life, born again, who makes you a new person on the inside. Not a religious person, but a new person. If up until this point you've never done what Rachel did to come and find in Jesus your completeness. If you've never to this moment prayed to Jesus and said, Lord, forgive my sins. And I want to accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. If you've never done that, then I want to pray with you right now. I want to lead you in a simple prayer that you can pray with me. To express your faith in Jesus and say, Jesus, this Easter Sunday morning, I acknowledge that you are the living God, the living Savior, and I want to follow you. I want you to change my life, forgive my sin, meet every need in me, do wonders in my life. If you'd like to do that and you've never done that before, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me and see what Jesus will do for you. Let's do that together. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If there's anyone here you've never prayed a prayer before up until this time, embracing Jesus as your Lord, I want you to do this with me. Pray this with me, please. If you've never done this before, Lord Jesus, I receive you into my life. I embrace you as the one who forgives my sins. As the one who meets every need in my life. As my Lord and my Savior. From this day, I will follow you. Save me, Lord Jesus. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is anyone here, you pray the prayer for the very first time. If you can turn the lights on, that'll be great so I can see. Is anyone here, you pray the prayer for the very first time. Could you raise your hand, please? We want to celebrate with you. Anybody here, you pray this prayer for the very first time with me. Could you kindly raise your hands? 
Anybody, you pray this prayer for the very first time. Could you raise your hand? Anybody here, please? Just, I can't, I can't see. Is there anybody here? Oh, I see one hand here. Great. Anybody else? Anybody in the balcony? There's another one in the balcony. You know, if you pray this prayer this morning, I would like you to do one thing before you leave, please. You know, you've made a major decision in your life. Just like Nicodemus, where his life was changed with his encounter with Jesus. Just like the Roman centurion, when he met Jesus, or Rachel, when she met Jesus, or Mary, when she met Jesus. You've made the most important decision, and we want to celebrate with you. After we dismiss, could you please make your way right up to this front row here? And Pastor Stephen Benny, who is wearing the white shirt, will meet with you. We want to give you a copy of the New Testament if you don't have a copy. We also want to give you a card that says first steps, just giving you some instructions on what you need to do having made this decision. So please, as soon as we dismiss, could you make your way from the balcony, from, from the back here, just make your way to the front row, meet with Pastor Stephen, collect this, spend a few moments with him before you leave. Can we just close, to get close together by singing, He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Uh, Georgie, would you lead us? I don't want to risk singing in front of the public. You know. He is Lord, He is Lord, He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord, you have risen from the dead and you're my Lord, yes, my knees shall bow and my tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. Just raise your voices and just thank him. Just thank him for this day. Oh, God, we just worship you. You are exalted, Lord. Oh, just raise your voices and sing to him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen, amen. Lord, we just worship you as King, as Lord, our mighty Jesus, our glorious Jesus. We exalt you. We celebrate you. We bless you. And we want to say, Lord, thank you for dying on the cross and for being raised up from the dead. And be seated at the Father's right hand. We celebrate you, Jesus. We give you glory, honor, and praise. You are worthy of it all. We will live our lives for you. 
We will do your will, O Lord, and we will honor you. Do wonders in each of our lives. Be glorified in each of our lives. We thank you, O God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive the benediction. Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though darkness cover the earth and deep darkness the people, yet the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We just want to thank our performing arts team. Guys, you did a great job. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. God bless you all. Have a great Easter Sunday afternoon. Uh, don't forget to register for Success in Life on the table outside. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Uh, those of you who have just made a decision for Christ this morning, please meet Pastor Stephen Benny right up here this, uh, on the front row. God bless. See you again.